He checks all the boxes except for this. Is he still the one? We're going to explore this in a moment. How many times have you said he checks all the boxes, but there's no chemistry? He's still married, just lost his job, hung up on another woman, has a contentious relationship with his ex. He has a child or children still at home. He's not, he says he's not ready for a serious relationship. He loved bombed me. I make more money than him. He has no retirement plan. The sex sucked. He lives a thousand miles away. He's got health issues. And the list can go on and on. So should you accept him the way he is? Oftentimes, these are questions women ask themselves because he checks all the boxes. Can I ask you something? What are the boxes? Like, what are the boxes? Like, why do we have these boxes? Okay, he's the right height, but he's out of work. He still has hair on his head, but there's no chemistry. <laughs> he's got a great job and makes lots of money, but he's still married. He's a creative type but he's out of work. You know, these lists can go on and on. So I want to explore this for a moment. Let's go through this particular list because the list I created tends to be the ones where there's a lot of vacillation for women. And I'm just going to merely give you my perspective on the ones this, except this, he checks all the boxes, except this and decide how to best to explore this for yourself. So one of the most common ones is he checks the boxes, but there's no chemistry. This is a really tricky one because let's face it, having physical attraction for our partner is rather important. It's important to men. Certainly it's the way we get our equipment up. Okay. But it's certainly important to women as well. Let's differentiate between physical attraction and chemistry because Chemistry and physical attraction don't necessarily go hand in hand. So sometimes when women say there's no chemistry, what they're really saying is there's no physical attraction. Over the years, I've, by the way, I've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of women now over the years. And I would say nearly one third of them had said to me, and I quote, my guy and I didn't have chemistry on the first date. And yet something changed. Now I have a rule of thumb. If you feel a connection outside of the physical attraction, and I jokingly say this to my clients, so long as he doesn't have a beer gut the size of Texas or he's missing all his front teeth, okay? If you feel some level of energetic connection, even if you don't have physical attraction towards him, you might find over a period of time, I said, I didn't finish my thought earlier. Nearly one third of women I've coached have said, and I quote, I didn't have chemistry with them on the first, second or third date. Something changed. If this person checks boxes, and so long as the physical attraction doesn't feel like repulsive, it doesn't feel like Quasimodo, and I, I'm sorry to be this you know, crass when I say this, if he's a good, decent guy, but he's just not your type, you may want to give him a chance. At the same time, I want to completely honor that if there isn't, if you just don't feel chemistry with someone, that's okay too. You know, I, I think we have to honor our innate hits that we have within us. And this is very tricky because sometimes our ego can cloud our judgment. I've worked with women who have said to me, who are five foot two in height and say, I refuse to date a man under six foot two. I refuse to date a man under six foot two. I don't feel protected unless he is six foot two or greater. You know, it's interesting. Um, they, they say I need to feel protected. Okay, I get that. Do you know who Bruce Lee was? I can't imagine he was much more than 5'6", five, 5'7", five, or 5'8". I don't know his actual height. But he could kick the crap out of 20 guys all at once. So, so that feeling of protection was really more so an, a rationalization to something that the ego wants six foot two. You know, there are plenty of women who are taller than their guys, and these are women ridiculously happy in the relationship. So you have to ask yourself, is this except this coming from the ego or is it genuinely coming from the heart? Okay, he's still married. 
if I have to answer this one, this is like a deal breaker. This isn't a, oh, it's a red flag. But Jonathan, we have so much chemistry. He checks all the boxes. But he's married, okay? How would you like it to be in reverse? So I don't even want to spend any time on that one. Let's just leave that as, that's a deal breaker. Run, Forrest, run, okay? He just lost his job. This actually happened to a client of mine who was incredibly financially successful. She was a high achieving woman and the man he was with had just lost his job, literally right at the time they began dating. You know, I would say that a man who's just lost his job is going to go through some emotional trauma, could even affect his identity. So it's probably not a bet, best bet. There's always exceptions to the rule. I will tell you, I've had that particular client. He went on, they went on to move in together. She is the primary breadwinner, but he's also started his own business and now he is equally as successful. So there's always the exception to the rule. But I would say that if a man has just lost his job or there's some professional crisis going on in his life, a male's identity is so wrapped up in their professional life that you may want to really revisit that then. He's hung up on another woman. This is one that comes up frequently. Hey, if someone is still hung up on another woman, but Jonathan, he checks all the boxes. You know, if someone who has walls up, someone who's, in, who's still hung up on another person, somebody who hasn't healed, I'm putting this all in that same category for a moment. It's going to be difficult for them to actually open your their heart up to you. It's going to be rather difficult to open your heart up to you, their heart up to you. And particularly if they are, I've observed men, you know, when they love someone and they love them deeply, whether it's emotionally healthy love or it's contentious love, it's very rare that they, unless they've done some deep healing in their, in that processing, are they ready to open themselves up for someone new? This is why someone just ended a marriage or has just ended, just gone through a breakup with someone. It's very, there, there needs to be some time to heal. I, I've always said for every three months that the relationship, you know, has been going on, you need almost one month of healing for every three months of the relationship. In addition, now, if it's a 10-year relationship, it's not three months, but I would say a good one to two years of healing after that. By the way, I want you to think of a relationship as a tapestry and unraveling that tapestry requires some individual healing. And if he's still even communicating with that woman, oh my God, that could be very problematic if it's incessant communication versus the occasional, hey, uh, I wish you Merry Christmas or happy birthday, okay? Jonathan, he checks all the boxes, but he's got a contentious ex. This is a tricky one. This isn't an absolute deal breaker. This is one of those, you know, it, it will bleed into your relationship. And it depends on how emotionally healthy, how emotionally mature this person is. If you haven't seen my chart on emotional maturity and relationship skills, not a fact, it's merely opinion. About 20% of the population has clinical issues. And if they have a contentious ex, it's going to be rather problematic. And while I say 20% of the population is emotionally healthy, I'm being rather generous. Most everyone is dysfunctional. So if an emotionally healthy man has a contentious ex, I would say your relationship has a fighting chance. If he is dysfunctional or clinical in his weak, um, weak emotional maturity or weak relationship skills, then I'm going to say that a contentious ex will be rather problematic. Okay. Next one, he has a child at home. For many of us, who are baby boomers or Gen Xers. Many of us are empty nesters and we ideally like to find an empty nester as well. We did all the heavy lifting, you know, prior to this point in our lives. You know, our children, ideally we'd like to have them launch so we can, if we're single in midlife, we can begin anew with someone else. And yet some people are still raising children. I've heard this from women many times. Well, and the tricky part is sometimes men use their, 
They use their children as a crutch. And by the way, women do it too. So they use their will, women, excuse me, the man will use their child, particularly if it's a daughter as a crutch or worse. His daughter, especially if it's a daughter, oftentimes becomes the emotional support person in his life. This can be rare, very tricky. I'm not saying this is an absolute, but this can be very tricky. Uh, if you haven't done some research on emotional incest um, or covert incest, okay, I highly recommend Googling that, okay? What happens, this happens to women with their sons and this happens to men with their daughters, where that child becomes their primary emotional support person and it's rather unhealthy. Now, I'm not saying this happens all the time. This happens, it certainly happens enough where they've written articles on it, but you have to be mindful of that. Or do they use their child as an excuse to keep a buffer between you and them because they always have, and by the way, you're a very sympathetic person. Children always come first. But if you're beginning a, a, a relationship with someone, you have every, every right to ask for, being treated as important as everything else important in their life, especially ladies, if you're having physical intimacy with someone, you have every right to ask for that. Now, the next one is a really tricky one. Is He says, I'm not ready for a serious relationship. Okay, this is really tricky because a lot of people in midlife are afraid. They're afraid of making another mistake. They're afraid of getting too close to someone. Some are incapable of actually being close to another human being. So it's understandable that there could be this reservation. Now, most dating coaches will tell you if a man says he's not ready for a serious relationship, that should be a deal breaker. I certainly believe it's a red flag. Now, red flag simply means asking deeper questions because they might say it cavalierly in the sense that they just don't want you to get attached to them too quickly. That might be a reason. I went to a wedding last year with a man who said, I'm not looking for a serious relationship and he ended up getting married after dating for a couple, they've been together for three years. So there's always exception to this rule. This is a tricky one. So you have to get into the real, you have to get granular why aren't you ready for a serious relationship? Because it just simply might mean he's like, look, I don't want to give you false hope with me. I don't know if I like you yet. So I'm going to say I'm not ready for a serious relationship with you. Or is it that they definitively don't want to get remarried? They don't want to live with somebody. Okay. So I would say when someone says I'm not ready for a serious relationship, that to me, you know, is a red flag. It means asking deeper questions. Um, and then you, by the way, you then simply share, I want a significant relationship. I want a significant relationship. I want to get remarried. An honorable man who knows he doesn't want those two things will cut you loose. I think most men can be virtuous, you know, an honorable man, a dishonorable man, a user or a spender will take advantage of you. This is where you have to be a bit of your own detective. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My area of expertise is all based on discernment, getting more granular, being more inquisitive in the early stages, just like we're doing in this video. So you don't find yourself getting attached to somebody who isn't capable of a relationship. Okay, the next one, he loved bomb me. Okay, this is a tricky, Jonathan, he checks all the boxes, but he loved bomb me. <laughs> okay, this is tricky because I've loved bomb women and I think I'm a pretty good guy. So love bombing, okay, so you have to really get to the granular intent of the love bombing. Was he just trying to get in your pants or was he just overly excited? Just remember that lust and limerence, limerence is extreme infatuation, is oftentimes chemically driven, okay? Should it be a deal breaker? I think, you know, there's an old saying, men are the gas, women are the brakes, okay? This is the one where I would slow the pace and then see how genuine, and again, if you're not asking those deeper questions earlier on, then you're going to be setting yourself up for failure. I make more money than him. Okay, this is one where, okay, 
first off, I don't consider that a deal breaker. It might be a red flag. I certainly think that two incomes are better than one. I certainly think you may want to get a sense of his past relationships. If he has a propensity of choosing women with money and then using them, then try to do your due diligence. But I don't think that should be a deal breaker in and of itself. But Jonathan, you know, he might get intimidated by me. You know, I'm tired of this intimidation. You know, an insecure man is an insecure man. You haven't done anything to in make him insecure. Okay. But I would say on that particular one, ask deeper questions. Understand that money is an important component in a relationship. If you haven't read the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, I highly recommend going to page four or, or chapter four. Chapter four, right there. The cost of love, work and money. Read this chapter because it relates to the next question as well. Jonathan, he has no retirement plan. Well, guess what? At midlife, we have to contemplate these things. So you have to ask yourself, um, because there is a financial component to a significant relationship, whether we want to address it or not. You know, for a lot of men in midlife, they got wiped out. I got wiped out at age 40. I had to rebuild my life. And it took me a decade and a half before I could build any semblance of you know, wealth at this point in my life. I had to rebuild at the age of 40. And thankfully, I feel like I'm in a good place. And for some people, they're in a rebuilding. That doesn't mean, I don't think that should be a deal breaker. Because again, I believe two incomes, two resources, two households are better than one. I, I certainly think it deserves more curiosity and questioning. Okay, here's one. The sex sucked. Man, that's a tough one. I mean, that's, uh, by the way, I, I've been in that. Oh my gosh. I've been there. I know some of you have been there as well. Um, you know, I, I think it, like sex can be improved, okay? They check all the boxes, but the sex sucked. Um, boy, I, I really don't know how to counsel you on that one. That's kind of an individual choice. Um, if it's if it will be an inherent problem and physical intimacy is an important cornerstone for a relationship for you, then I understand your reservation for wanting to to move forward with somebody where the physical intimacy sucked. At the same time, a relationship is more than physical intimacy. I guess the question is, is good, good enough, okay? If, if, if mediocre is good enough, I'm sorry, this is a tough one. I really don't even know how to counsel anyone on this one because I know, I know, it, you know, some people would be happy with mediocre sex than no sex at all. You have to ask that one for yourself. He's got health issues. That's a tricky one too. You know, I guess the question is, does, is he on his health issues? You know, I'll be candid with you. I have hypertension. I think it's partly due to my eating habits. Um, I probably will have a little bit too much salt in my diet. Um, but I, I go to a cardiologist. I go to my doctor on a regular basis. You know, I guess it depends on, is he on top of his health issues or does he neglect his health? Because neglecting his health is probably for those of you that value health, Someone who neglects their health, that's probably a deal breaker versus he's on top of it and he's managing it. And the last one for today, he lives thousands of miles away. Jonathan, he checks all the boxes, but he lives several hours away, thousands of miles away. Well, long distance dating is a pain in the gigantic butt. And I'm here to say that long distance dating, if you don't have a game plan very early on, it takes, it takes a tremendous amount of emotional maturity to make a relationship work when it's long distance. And first off, it's long distance dating at first, but then eventually, if you don't create a plan in a very short period of time to take the distance into you know, the same zip code, it's going to be very problematic because long distance relationships have an inherent bubble associated with them. There's a lot of great juicy stuff happens when you're together. And when you're apart, you get to live your own life and stuff like that. And then you come back to the bubble. Ultimately, a lot of these relationships implode. So they are gigantic. It's not a red flag. It's not a deal breaker. But boy, 
you could be going down the path with the wrong person and spend years with the wrong person. And again, if you if you take that distance and move it closer apart and it still doesn't work out, that's okay too. But at least you're not invest, at least you're approaching it with a sense of consciousness. And I invite everyone to have a plan when they do a long distance dynamic. So he checks all the boxes, but is he still the one? Ultimately, dating is a vetting process. Dating is an experience to decide if you choose to want to be in a relationship with. And a relationship is an experience where you have to decide if you want to be in partnership with one another. Most relationships do not work out. Statistically speaking, the odds are against us because of a lack of emotional maturity, a lack of intentionality. There's a multitude of reasons. But at the end of the day, hey, it's your journey. Go at it with a sense of consciousness. Go at it in the sense of objectivity and recognize that every experience that you've ever had is preparing you for that juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship in the future. And I invite that in for everyone going forward. Hey, listen, I love to hear your thoughts on this video. Post a comment below if you have something to share. As always, if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And also, if you want to connect with me, check out the links in the show notes in the first comment to schedule a discovery call. Join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out the books I recommend. Follow me on Instagram as well. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.